My mother-in-law Claire is crouching down with her hands at her stomach. Paramedics arrived immediately. They carry Claire on a stretcher. Are you her daughter? Claire is clutching her stomach. She looks at me and says, She is just my son's wife. She's not my daughter. Even though Claire seems to be in such pain, she corrects them. Oh, I see. But you are a relative, aren't you? Could you please come with us? The paramedic asked. I gave her a cold look and said, I will not come with you. My name is Mary, a 27-year-old housewife. My husband Tim and I have been married for three years. Tim and I met at a party hosted by a friend. Tim is a very cheerful and friendly to anyone. I found him kind and nice. I am shy, so I admire people like him. I never thought he would be interested in me, however, he strongly approached me. Mary, are you interested in camping? What? Camping? I've only done it once when I was a student. I see. Well, I really like camping. Would you like to go camping with us sometime? Sure. First. We went camping with four of us, and then I started talking to him often, so we got closer. He often asked me out to dinner and other stuff, and we officially became a couple. After dating him for about two years, he proposed to me, so we got married. I was very happy when he asked me to marry him, and was at the peak of my happiness. After that, we went to his house to tell his parents about our marriage. My impression on his parents was good. His father was a cheerful and kind person just like him. His mother was quiet. She was smiling when we met and did not speak much. So I thought she and I were alike and felt fond of her. I realized that it was a mistake when I visited my parents-in-law's house for a family gathering. As soon as Claire saw me, she looked at me coldly and said, Hurry up and come to the kitchen to help me. And when I went to the kitchen, she said harshly, You moron! Can't you move faster? At first, I thought she was acting like that because she was busy. But she made me clean every nook and cranny that nobody would look at at the party. I was exhausted by the time the party started, but Claire didn't care. She gave orders to me one after another. Can't you see that someone has an empty glass? Go pour the beer! After giving me these orders, Claire said things to the relatives to insult me, such as I'm sorry, my daughter-in-law is really useless. She grew up being spoiled, so I need to teach her from the beginning. Claire would say things like that and laugh hysterically. I was surprised that she not only insulted me, but also casually insulted my parents. I glanced at my husband, who was drinking a lot and making a lot of noise. He didn't seem to care about me at all, which made me feel lonely. So at our first gathering at my in-law's house, I caught a glimpse of Claire's true nature. She wasn't like me at all. She acted completely different from the time we first met. Perhaps she was trying to determine what kind of woman I was at that time. Mary. I'm sorry for keeping you busy, said my father-in-law Bob. He saw me that I walked back and forth between the kitchen and the party room. My wife is bossy and make other people work hard. Tim was our only son and we had him when we got old, so we spoiled him a little. It may be causing you a little trouble, Mary. If it is, 
I am sorry. Bob apologized to me. Oh, it is not Bob, I replied. At that time, I really didn't feel annoyed so much. I often hear stories about mother in laws being strict to their daughters in law. I also hear that husbands are not very cooperative. Tim is kind to me when we were alone at home, and he does his share of housework, so I was not that dissatisfied. Bob said, Thank you for saying so. I am happy that you married Tim. Oh, I am happy to marry Tim as well. Bob's kind attitude eased me greatly. Maybe because there were so many relatives that made Claire's attitude that way. I was surprised indeed, but I thought it was not a good idea to determine what kind of person Claire and Tim were just for this day. After this party, everything returned to normal. Tim is the same as usual. He helps me with the housework. He is kind and cheerful. Tim does not visit his parents' house so often. He only goes back at the Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, for about a year after we got married, I hardly had anything to do with Claire. But that changed when Bob was seriously injured in an accident and needed nursing care. Claire asked us to move in with them. Mary, my mom asked us to move in, and I also worried about my dad. So, will you please agree to move into their house? Tim asked me with serious tone. I was surprised because Tim had never asked me something so seriously. Bob's condition must be bad. I was also worried about Bob. So I agreed to move into my in law's place. At this point, I had no idea that it would be the biggest mistake of my life. We moved in and started living with Tim's parents. Claire said with a nice and kind voice, Thank you for moving in with us. Hope we will get along well from now on. I felt relieved. I felt her attitude is normal. But then she said to me, Well, get up here and do some cleaning now. Oh, any problem? You married Tim. You must do the housework. Vacuum and wipe the floor as soon as possible. What are you doing? Hurry up and move. Oh, okay, Claire. Claire acted like this right after we moved in, so I became worried about my life here at once. She was acting rudely not because she was too busy at the relatives' gathering. She was like that to begin with. Since then, Claire has been pushing me to do all the household chores. As I worked, I could not do housework during the day. However, Claire complained a lot. When I came home from work, Claire forced me to do an unbelievable amount of housework. She left lunch dishes unwashed, so I had to wash the dishes first, then cook dinner. Clean the room, bathroom, and so on. In the morning, I had to make breakfast for everyone. Moreover, I had to make Tim's lunch. Claire forced me to do it. Make sure Tim eats properly and healthy food. So I had to get up early in the morning and cook every day. I became too tired, and both the quality of my housework. And my work began to deteriorate. Claire said to me, You moron, you are so slow, you are really useless. I became more and more exhausted, both physically and mentally. But the saddest part for me was Tim didn't say anything to Claire or me when he saw it. On the contrary, since we moved in, he stopped doing any housework. If he had helped me with the housework as he did before, my workload had been lessened. Well, even if Tim tried to do the housework, 
probably Claire stopped him and did not let him do it. Still, I wanted him to at least show me that he was willing to support me. I had no choice but to quit my job because I was reaching my limit. Claire had been grumbling about me working, so that was part of the reason as well. I didn't want to spend time with Claire for a whole day, but I had no choice as the workload became too much and I started to feel ill. However, quitting the job did not lessen my workload because in addition to housework, Claire forced me to take care of Bob. Well, do the housework while I'm gone, Mary. Claire went out to town for shopping and lunch leaving Bob alone. I couldn't leave Bob alone, so I took care of him while doing the housework. Mary, I'm so sorry. I didn't think Claire was that helpless and cold-hearted. Bob was quite shocked that Claire left him with me and made me take care of him. They were married because they loved each other. It would be natural for him to feel sad if he was treated this way. I felt sorry for Bob, so I tried to talk to him a lot while I took care of him. He told me a lot about his past and memories with Claire. He also told me about Tim's childhood. I enjoyed talking with him. It was the most relaxing time for me while doing the housework. The rest of the time was really hard. Claire still bullied me, and Tim did not do anything about it. Once I talked to Tim about Claire, he said, I'm tired from work. He never listened to me at all. After that, Tim became quite cold to me. He started to complain and order me to do housework and so on, just like Claire. I was considering divorce but I had already quit my job. My parents live in a rural area, so I cannot easily return home. That was why I could not make up my mind about divorce. A year passed with those hard days. Bob was getting weaker and weaker. He could barely talk so long. And Claire and Tim became more and more demanding. I had reached my limit. Then one day, Bob said to me, Mary, thank you for everything. You worked hard enough. You should free yourself now. What does that mean? Leave Tim and leave this house. You are still young. You shouldn't waste your life here. But I can't live on my own. Leave it to me. Take this key and leave. What's this? I bought a room for you. What? You took such good care of me until now. This is my appreciation. Oh no, I can't accept it. But Mary, if you stay here, you will be suffering more. Please accept it. I want to properly thank you, so I won't regret it. Oh. I decided to accept it as his gratitude and carefully prepared to move. I sent my belongings little by little so Claire and Tim would not notice. It took quite a long time, but I was almost ready to move. That's when it happened. On Saturday morning, Claire suddenly had a very bad stomach ache. Claire had gone out for drinks with her friends the day before and eaten a lot of raw oysters. Probably that is how she got the stomach ache. Claire crouched down with her hands on her stomach. Then Tim started getting ready to leave. I thought he was taking her to the hospital, but he was not. He picked up the big bag and said, Well, I'm going camping. Take care of mom and dad. I was deeply disgusted. His mother was suffering like this and he was prioritizing camping. But I didn't want to get angry with him 
so I didn't say anything and sent him off. Meanwhile, Claire was writhing in pain on the floor, screaming for an ambulance. So I called an ambulance for her. The paramedics soon arrived and carried Claire on a stretcher. Are you her daughter? Claire looks at me, holding her stomach in pain. She is just my son's wife. She is not my daughter. Claire corrects him even though she was in such pain. Oh, I see. But you are a relative, aren't you? Can you come with us? The paramedic asked me. I gave her a cold look and said, I'm not coming with you. She has bullied me a lot. She even forced me to take care of her own husband. I have gone through a lot. I'm moving out and getting a divorce, so I will be a complete stranger. When I said this, Claire was at a loss for words. Then I went to my room and start packing the rest of my stuff. The paramedics looked uncomfortable and carried Claire out of the house. After I finished packing, I went to Bob's room and said, Bob, thank you so much for everything you have done for me. He said, No, no, thank you so much. Be happy. And waved at me. I waved back, left his room, and left the house. Several days ago, I called a helper when Claire was gone. So the helper is supposed to come to the house to take care of Bob, so I could move into my new room in peace. The room Bob bought for me was quite beautiful and spacious. I was surprised. It would probably cost $300,000. By the time I moved in, the name of the room was also changed to mine, so the room has become completely mine. Now all I have to do is to find a job and lead a steady life. A few hours later, Tim called me with rage. Hey, why didn't you go to the hospital with mom? She was so mad. Well, I will be a stranger. I have no reason to go with her, don't I? I'm divorcing you. I left the divorce papers on the table, so please sign them. Oh no, what? Why? You ask me why? If you don't know why, you're a fucking moron. All this time, I've been bullied by your mother. You didn't even care. Moreover, you started to boss me around too. How do you expect me to stick with you forever? But if you got divorced, you have nowhere to go, don't you? Fortunately, I do have a room that your father gave me. He bought me an apartment room. Huh? Well, that's that. From now on, contact me through my lawyer. Hey, wait! I hung up the phone. I heard that Tim and Claire were making a fuss a lot, but Bob settled them down. Bob also called a lawyer and divorced Claire. Then he kicked them out of the house and sold the property and moved to a nursing facility. Claire and Tim lost their house, plus they had to pay alimony that I claimed for their moral harassment. They are now living poorly because of the debts. On the other hand, I got a new job and I'm comfortably living in the room Bob bought for me. From now on, I can enjoy my life. I would like to find something I love to do as well. It was hard to believe that the mother-in-law made her daughter-in-law take care of her husband. It was surprising that the father-in-law gave a nice room to the daughter-in-law. I guess all her hard work has been rewarded. I hope she will meet someone nice and live happily in the future. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.